guys this is a follow-up video on uh, using your hong kong company to do business with mainland china one of the frequently asked questions i receive on a daily basis uh, is can i use my hong kong company and sponsor my work visa in mainland china um, the answer to this question is unfortunately no you cannot do that uh, simply because hong kong is a separate jurisdiction from china uh, Hong Kong companies are treated as foreign companies. Even if you establish a company, yes, you can use it to trade with China, just like in uh, you know any other country. Uh, maybe you can use your U.S. company, Canadian company, etc., all the other foreign companies, uh, and trade with China. Same goes true uh, for the Hong Kong companies. But the difference between Hong Kong companies and maybe the rest of the world uh, when doing business with mainland China is because Hong Kong enjoys a lot of agreements, uh, you know, trade agreements with mainland China because, you know, Hong Kong is uh, one of the administrative centers uh, of, of China, actually. But uh, the legislation is entirely different. It's based on common law system where in China you have civil law system. So therefore, uh, registered companies in Hong Kong are treated as foreign companies. And therefore, you cannot use your Hong Kong company uh, to have a work visa, even business visa, or any type of visa for that matter um, in mainland China. But what you can do is, uh, just like we discussed in previous videos, you can use your Hong Kong company to establish a child company uh, or a subsidiary company in mainland China that will allow you to sponsor your work visa using that subsidiary company you can sponsor your work visa uh, for China and then maybe relocate or send your stuff uh, etc to, to run this uh, subsidiary company the requirements for work visa as we discussed uh, is minimum bachelor's degree uh, for mainland China and uh, that minimum bachelor's degree should be obtained from a recognized university and uh, in this context recognized means that your university should be in the UN database uh, it's common knowledge you can google it and UN United Nations has a uh, universities database it should appear uh, in that database okay and uh, of course uh, you need to get the diploma of that bachelor's degree legalized through the chinese embassy and actually uh, some people also ask china now signed uh, a membership to hack convention for you know apostle uh, we have already checked that yes um, china is a member of apostle right now but uh, the apostle is not fully uh, enforced yet and uh, for now, uh, the legalization of documents which are used, which are you know, to be used in China, is required. So if your diploma is not from China, your degree, uh, then you need to contact the Chinese embassy uh, where your university is located. Uh, maybe you studied in the UK, for example, uh, and your diploma is from a UK uh, you recognized university. In that case, you need to contact the Chinese embassy in the UK, get it legalized. Once you get it legalized, you need to translate it, obviously, into Chinese by a translation company and let them stamp it. And after that, the second requirement is you need to provide at least uh, two years related work experience. Work experience should be from uh, your previous company in the form of a letter, confirmation letter and it should be printed on a headed paper of that company with all the contact details and it should be signed by human resources department human resources manager and it should include uh, several key elements there number one the position you held number two the responsibilities um, you performed and your salary okay and of course your overall performance uh, so kind of it's a recommendation slash uh, work experience letter. Next requirement is uh, you need to provide office, physical office location for your China company. And physical office, um, uh, it has to be in a commercial building and you need to obviously sign a lease agreement. Uh, you need to provide that. Next uh, requirement is residential 
uh, lease agreement that is for you to live in China. Unfortunately, it's not possible to apply for Chinese work visa without uh, providing this lease agreement for your you know, residence. You cannot use hotel, you cannot use uh, you know, other, like for example, friend's house, etc. Uh, you can maybe use friend's house, but as long as your name is on the lease agreement, okay, you need to provide that. And lastly, there is medical check certificate, which is obtained in the city where you are applying for this Chinese work visa. If it's Shanghai, there are designated uh, hospitals, you need to contact them and you need to you know, obtain that medical certificate. It's a general medical check, um, takes one day, and then they will issue this medical certificate after five days. They will either mail it to your Chinese address or you just have to go there, pick it up. So these are the requirements for work visa, okay, using the subsidiary company here. If you qualify for work visa, you can apply. And these requirements are the same irrespective of your position. Some people just uh, assume wrongfully that I am the owner of the company. I am the director of the company. Why should I qualify? Okay, why should I have to prove that I have this academic degree, etc.? Unfortunately, these are the requirements. These are not negotiable. You cannot just go to the government and, well, I'm the director of the company. I should be entitled to get this work visa. It doesn't work like that. Even if you're the director of the company, manager of the company, or any other executive uh, in the company, you have to qualify. The next uh, misconception people have from time to time is um, they don't assign any position uh, to themselves in the company and they are the you know owner of the company the shareholder of the company and they think that as a shareholder of the company i am entitled uh, for work visa this is also not true okay it's a misconception even if you are the owner of the company you should make sure that you uh, give yourself some sort of position uh, usual you know, position is uh, the director of the company. If you are the director of the company, of course, uh, your name uh, is going to appear on a, a business license of the Chinese company. And uh, that's the typical position. But if you don't want to be the director, you need to assign somebody as a director, but you can take the role of a supervisor. These are the two required positions uh, in uh, any Chinese typical company. Uh, and these two positions must be held by two separate individuals, guys. It cannot be taken one person. This is another misconception, by the way. Many people compare, you know, uh, LLCs to other countries, maybe even, for example, Hong Kong company. In Hong Kong, you can take the position of the director. You can be the, you know, supervisor of the company. There's no supervisor requirement, but still, you can take up a bunch of other positions as well, and um, the law allows it. But in China, that's not the case, okay? In China, you need to uh, have separate individual director and separate individual supervisor. And another misconception, let me uh, also include that here. Some people say we are like five directors. <laughs> Can we all apply for visa? First of all, you need to understand that Chinese W4, like a wholly uh, foreign-owned enterprise in China, 100% owned by foreigners, this type of company is an LTD company, but it can only have one individual managing director. That's it. The rest of the people, in this case, for example, five people, four people, one of them can be executive director. The rest of them can take uh, assistant director, maybe, or assistant manager, maybe, etc., other positions. Okay, Director is one, managing CEO, that's it, whose name appears on the business license. And uh, so basically, you know, this is the scenario, okay? If you have a Hong Kong company to summarize, you cannot apply for work visa in China, but what you can do is you can use your Hong Kong company to start a China company separate entity. That's a standalone uh, entity, but a subsidiary of your uh, China company. As we discussed in the previous video, there are a bunch of benefits to, uh, for, the, for the structure. Uh, because, again, uh, due to the number of agreements, trade agreements between mainland China and Hong Kong, and uh, that's easier to transfer funds back to Hong Kong, repatriate funds from your Chinese company, if you are using this structure. Okay, <clears throat> If the parent company is in Hong Kong and child company is in uh, mainland China, 
it's much easier to repatriate funds back to Hong Kong and then from Hong Kong you can take your money elsewhere so with that I'm going to close this video if you have any questions feel free to reach out I'll be glad to hear from you and uh, see you guys in the next one